Welcome to Confessions of a Small Biz Mama, episode 37. What to do when you don't even know what your goals should be. Okay, so I did some lives on the Facebook page this week, which if you're not following us on Facebook, search for Small Biz Mama and uh, like our page. Because I go live there a couple times a week. And so recently I was talking about, you know, not waiting until January. Like, let's imagine that 2020 is over and let's start building the habits or, you know, getting rid of the habits that we have that are keeping us from getting what we want. Okay. So let's, you know, January is just an arbitrary thing. Let's not wait. And so a whole bunch of you reached out to me and said, yeah, that's great, but I have no idea like even where to get started. Like, how do I figure out like what I should be working on? What are the things that are, you know, holding me back? And, and what, is, what do I want to do? I know for a lot of you, this is kind of a season where either you're at home with your kids or you're hating your job or maybe you've lost your job um, and you're trying to figure out like, what am I going to do next, right? Like, what's the next piece for me? Um, I know some people have, have kind of lost direction with their business. They need to pivot their business and they're like, they're really not sure what the next thing is. So this is, um, I'm going to give you two ways that you can do this that I think will, um, will kind of help get your brain going. So first off, you have to be in the right mind frame to do this. Okay. So this is not an activity that you do when the kids are running around. This is not an activity you try to do when your spouse is talking to you or your significant other's trying to talk to you. This is something that you need to do in like a quiet place with a nice cup of coffee or tea uninterrupted. Okay. If it's nice where you are, maybe go outside. Um, I find working outside, um, on things like this really helps. Um, you know, this is something if you don't have a lot of support to help you, this is something that you do like really early in the morning, late at night after the kids have gone to bed. Um, you know, if your kids are napping during nap time, but you've got to find a place where you can do this and think, okay, critically important. So turn off the notifications on your phone. Don't have the TV, don't have the radio, don't have anything. I know that that's really hard. And I know for a lot of you, you don't like being in that space where it's completely quiet because then you have to sit with your brain. We need you to sit with your brain for this one. Okay. Okay. We need that. Okay. So when you have the nice quiet space to think, okay, I want you to take out a notebook um, or a journal or a piece of paper or something. Okay. And I want you to write down these 10 areas of your life. Okay. Now for some of you, you might say this doesn't apply. This isn't important. Just write them all down. Okay. The first one is your health. Health. Okay. That's the first one. Second one is mental, emotional. Okay. So the first one's health. The second one's mental and emotional. The third one is partner or love. Now I know you might be thinking like, oh no, Kristen, this one doesn't apply to me. Just write it down. Just write it down. Okay. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. Number four is family. Number five is friends. Number six is mission. I know you might be saying that I don't, what do you mean? I don't, I don't have a mission. Just, just, just write it down. Write it down. That's all I got to do. Just write it down. Okay. Number seven is experiences. Again, no questions. Write down experiences. Okay. Spirit. Number nine is finances. And number 10 is learning. Now, if I went through that too fast, you're listening to a podcast, right? You can rewind. Just rewind. <laughs> rewind. Okay. Until you get them all. Okay. Don't worry. I'll wait. Sorry. It's good. Okay. All right. So now you've got a whole bunch of questions. And if you're like me, you're like, this doesn't apply. That doesn't apply. I don't know what this is. Okay. So, um, 
lots of different people that do things with goal setting and uh, and mindset work. Some people have six, some people have seven, some people have 10. Like this is, this is uh, based off the work of Brendan Burchard. This is like the most comprehensive list that I think um, they have. And so you don't have to, you don't have to work on all of these. Okay. You might say some of these don't apply. So let's, let's kind of go through these um, really quickly, just so that we can kind of define what they mean and, um, and how, how they might work for you. Um, so health, um, you know, health is your, your physical health, right? So how are you feeling? Um, how, how is your health? Right. Um, and what, what most people ask you to do is rank these on a scale of one to 10. Okay. So if you think about your physical health right now, okay, um, on a scale of one to 10, where do you think you are? Okay. Um, and just don't overthink it. Just give it a number. Okay. You know, I know some days it's funny. Like I wake up and my allergies are really bothering me and I'm like, Oh, today's like a three. Um, and they're like, no, no, today's really a five. Like five is kind of my, my baseline. Um, you know, like three would be like, I'm like, I'm sick. Like I'm, I'm sick. Um, you know, one is, you know, one is like deathbed. Okay. Um, you know, having gone through like cancer treatment and stuff, like I've, I've hit twos, um, you know, I've hit twos. I've never hit a one. Um, I, and I never hit 10, um, because I always think that I can do a little bit better. Um, so that's kind of where I'm so health, physical health, where are you? Um, mental and emotional. So how are you doing? Um, how are you doing mentally? Are your, you know, how are your emotions doing? Um, and, and be honest, right? Don't, don't overthink it, but be honest with yourself. Where are you? Um, partner and love. So you might be thinking, well, I'm, I'm single, you know, I don't have a partner. Okay. So that might be the love category for you might be self-love. It might be how well are you loving others? Um, or you could just say, I'm not, I'm not there right now. Okay. Um, if you are seeking, you know, seeking a relationship, where are you with that? How is that going on a scale of one to 10? What does that look like for you? Okay. Um, number four is family. So how, how are things going with your relationships with your family? Um, scale of one to 10. And then do that again with your friends. Okay. Um, the next one is mission. So notice on this list, there's nothing about career. There's nothing about business. Um, what is, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people don't know what their mission is. Um, you know, my, my mission, um, has kind of evolved. Okay. So my mission currently is to, um, help moms create more margin in their lives. And the primary way that I do that is through bookkeeper training school. Um, there are other things coming down the pipeline, right? But the, the primary way that I do that right now is with bookkeeper training school. And so how do I, you know, if you think about what your, what you think your mission in life is, and some of you, it's to raise your kids. Some of you, it's to, you know, build a business that creates financial stability. Um, some of you, it is some like a volunteer mission that you do, um, figure out what that mission is and, and the way that, and, and for some of you, it might be figuring out what your mission is, right? You just know that the path that you're on right now is not the one that you're supposed to be on. Right. And your mission does not have to be something that is like life changing. Um, your mission could be, um, you know, I'm kind of thinking about some, some folks that I know your mission could be to bring, you know, to bring joy to people through crafting, right? 
your mission could be um, to just help take stress off of people's, you know, your customers' plates by making sure their IT works properly. Um, your mission could be, um, you know, to to help, um, you know, to help business owners just just run their businesses more smoothly, right? Um, you know, I love helping people, right? I, I do. I love helping people. And so the more that I can help people do what they love to do, right? Then the better off the world is, you know? So that's like my little, my little corner, my little piece of what I can do. Um, you know, I know those of you like work in IT, when I can get that stuff off my plate and not have to deal with it, that makes me so happy. Like when my computer doesn't work right, it drives me nuts. It really doesn't. It stresses me out. Um, so, so think about, think about what, what your mission, what your mission is. Um, the next one's experiences. Are you experiencing life? Are you, and I know right now you're thinking nobody's experiencing anything because we're all at home. But, you know, the way that I think about that is, you know, am I, am I getting, you know, am I getting out and, and seeing nature? Am I, um, you know, sometimes we just go for drives. We just get in the car and we drive. Um, you know, we are currently, uh, we are currently self-isolating, um, just because the numbers are getting so high where we are. And so, um, you know, even like experiences for us to like, let's go out in the backyard and, and have a fire in the fire pit, um, and just kind of be together or, um, a lot of times for me, experiences have to do with being present, right? Um, I have, so because I have two businesses and I'm still teaching, you know, and, you know, trying to keep up with everything going on around the house, a lot of times just feels like I'm not there. Um, and so for me, sometimes that experience is just being present, right? So what is, what does that look like for you on a scale of one to 10? Um, spirit. So I've seen this one described a couple different ways. Um, I think for me, I think spirit is, it's different than mental and emotional because like there are days where you have good days um, mentally, but your spirit is just kind of not there. I think this one's really hard to explain. I, spirit is kind of the underlying tone right? Um, and I think we all kind of, I think maybe a lot of us are kind of struggling with this one right now, right? That, that you might be having okay days, but it feels like your spirit is crushed, right? Um, and sometimes that's, you know, a job that we hate. Sometimes that's a, um, sometimes that is a, you know, something going on in our lives that is just holding us down, right? And we don't, you know, our, our spirit feels like it's caged. Right. And so, um, yeah, in this one, I think that this one is, is, uh, this one's a little bit tougher, I think. Um, and I know a lot of people when they, when they put together categories, they kind of lump spirit in with mental and emotional, um, And, and I think that's okay if you want to do that. I think that that's okay. Um, for me, I kind of feel like the spirits, it's a separate separate thing. Um, again, on a scale of one to 10, like, you know, that, that, underlying, that underlying piece of you, right? Um, you know, you can kind of think about like, like, how's your soul do, right? So sometimes mentally and emotionally, I'm doing okay, but it feels like there's like a deficit in my soul. Right. Um, maybe that's how I would define that one. Okay. Um, you know, again, if, if any of these don't resonate with where you are right now, you know, you can leave them off the list and make your list shorter. That's totally okay. Um, fi <clears throat> finances, where you are, where are you with your finances right now? Scale of one to 10. Okay. Um, and again, like for me, like none of these ever hit 10. Um, because I know like the highest I, I ever usually go 
is an eight or a nine. Um, and so where are you with your finances right now? And then the last one is learning. So this one is really, really important to me because like, I just, I love learning. I love teaching people new things. And so this one is critically important to me. And learning doesn't have to be like being in a formalized program, right? So some people are like, oh, well, I'm not in college. So this isn't important. Um, learning is what are you reading? What are you consuming? Um, you know, how is that helping you be the type of person that you want to be. And if you have a big deficit in learning, um, it may be part of the reason why you have deficits in the other areas, right? So um, I think learning is going to tie into your other components um, as, as you're going through this process, okay? So for a lot of you, it may be you know, hey, my finances aren't good. All right, well, what do you need to learn about money? in order to get your finances where they need to be. Um, you know, what do you need to learn about, you know, your mental and emotional health in order to um, improve them, right? Cause some, it's, it's not as simple as saying, okay, I'm gonna be happy, right? It doesn't work that way. Um, I, I am a firm believer that a positive attitude, you know, can help but like learning how my brain works, learning to let go emotionally, um, those are the kinds of things that have created like the, the long-term, you know, the long-term mental health uh, that I needed, okay? So learning is really gonna tie into these other pieces, I think. Okay, so those are your 10 areas rank them, you know, all on a, on a scale of one to 10, how you think you're doing with them. And then there's two different ways that you can, you can look at this list. You can either look at it from the perspective that I can work on things that, you know, I can kind of help strengthen some of the things that are already pretty good. Um, or I can look at things that, that the numbers are really low and see how do I improve those. Um, the other way that you can look at it too is, you know, cause you're not going to tackle all of these at one time. Um, you just can't, but what you can do, I find is that if you work on like one or two of them and you do this check-in on a regular basis, it's going to help the other ones go up. Okay. So, um, so the other, the other thing to look at, if you're trying to pick one or two of these is which one or two of these if you worked on them would help improve the others. So for example, um, it is really hard to have a good spirit when your physical and mental health are not in a good place. It is very hard to really pour into your relationships um, with, you know, either your partner, your family, your friends, when, you know, when your spirit is really damaged. And so when you look at these things, I want you to think about where one area is affecting other areas. Okay. Um, like when you, when you give yourself a low score, I, I want you to kind of start thinking about like, what is causing that? Like, why, why is that occurring? Um, I mean, like, I know, like for me, um, when I am not walking outside on a regular basis, my health suffers, my mental health suffers, my spirit suffers which means that, you know, I'm less likely to like reach out to people. Um, I think my mission suffers because my energy levels suffer. And so there's kind of this cascading effect. So if you start to think about, okay, what's going on in these areas, it might point you to another area, 
You know, like I just can't invest in my family and my friends right now because I don't have the energy. All right, let me think about health. Like what's going on with me health wise um, that if I improve could help improve the other things. You see what I'm saying? So hopefully, so that, that's one way to look at it, okay? Um, and that's gonna give you kind of concrete, you know, concrete things to work on. The other thing that you can do um, and this is a little bit, I think for some people, they have trouble with this one. If you, and again, you need quiet space to do this because you really got to think. If you were on your deathbed, what are the things that you would regret not doing? Let's sit with that. And, you know, I was thinking about this this morning and I said, okay, so for me, it would be not being present, right? So, you know, not being present for my, my spouse and my family as much as I want to be. Um, it would be not taking better care of my health. Um, and there's a lot of things I want to learn. Um, and maybe that's just me. Um, you know, Jeff for Mother's Day last year got me a keyboard so I could learn piano. And actually, I think it might be, it might've been two years ago. Um, wow. Um, and so I haven't, like, I've just been so busy and I've had so many things going on. I have not really sat down to play. Um, and to learn. And that really bothers me because it's something that I've always wanted to do. And now like I have all the tools to do it. I just need to make the time. So, um, plus I want to be able to teach Eric when Eric's older, cause he's really interested in it. Um, so, you know, when you kind of think about what are the things right? Because we think we're talking about habits, right? This is started with habits. What habits do you need to create to be the person you want to be? Or what habits do you need to eliminate to be the person you want to be? That's ultimately how, how goals start. And so if you think about, okay, what will I regret, right? If I were on my deathbed right now, what would I regret? Um, you know, I would regret not putting more effort in to helping people. Um, yeah, that's one too. So I, so, you know, as I sit down, I say, okay, so write all these things down and then say, okay, so what do I have to do to change it? Right? So if I'm talking about being more present, you know, I need to put my phone down, right? I need to put my phone down and you say, okay, I am, I am no longer at work. So I am going to stop working. Okay. Um, and a lot of that's my phone. So, you know, one thing I've done, um, is I've kind of let some notifications slip in for new apps that we're using. And so I find that incredibly distracting. I got to turn those notifications back off, um, or at least change how I get them. Right. So my phone's not beeping and buzzing at me all the time. Um, you know, I need to, I need to do a better job with meal prep so that, um, I can be present with Eric after his nap and not worry about having to make dinner. Um, I need to, and it's really funny because this is the name, the new name of my new firm. I need to create more margin in my life so that I have the time to practice piano and, and learn the things that I want to learn. Okay. And so now I've got things like, okay, these are the things that I need to do. Now I have something to work on, right? I have habits to create. Um, I have things to do to help me get there. Right. And so if you don't know what to work on doing either of those two exercises, um, is going to help you figure that out. 
Okay. And if you haven't listened to the lives that we did um, on the Small Biz Mama page, you can, you know, go to facebook.com slash Small Biz Mama podcast, click on videos, um, and you can scroll down and, and find those two videos. Okay. Um, we'll also, we'll link them in the, in the show notes here. So that way that's an easy way to get them. So if you go to smallbizmama.com and click on podcast for episode number 37. All right. So let me know what questions you have about this. You know, I know, you know, you're probably thinking it's not the new year. Can't we just wait till January? No, no, you can't. And it doesn't matter when you're listening to this episode, you can start today. You can start right now. So maybe you're listening to this in November. Maybe you're listening to this in, um, in December. Maybe you're listening to this in February and you're saying, well, now the, the, you know, I, I missed January. I missed my opportunity. No, you haven't because the opportunity can start right now. There's no arbitrary date that you have to start these things. So why wait? So I hope that this episode was helpful for you. I would love to hear, um, I'd love to hear from you. You can comment below. You can reach out to us through smallbizmama.com. Um, but I'd love to know how you're doing um, with this and, and the impact that you are seeing in your life from taking these steps. All right, mama, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you soon. Thank you for listening to Small Biz Mama with Kristen Ingram. If you'd like to learn how to create more margin in your life, please visit us at smallbizmama.com. That's smallbizmama.com.